What is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And today I'm back at the desk because I have another special guest. Um, he is a senior writer at The Ringer. He's on the Ringer Fantasy Football Show, The Ringer NFL Draft Show, a major contributor to The Ringer's NFL Draft Guide, all sorts of crazy comps in there, a lot of fun to read. But that is Danny Kelly. How's it going? Thanks for joining me. What's up? It's doing, I'm doing well. I uh, really appreciate you representing the Seattle area so much. They got the Sonics jersey, the Seahawks jersey. The Sonics are coming mm-hmm. back apparently someday soon here, hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. Who's, whose jersey is that? Is that... I've got Sean a Sean Kemp. What do you got? <laughs> I've got a Gary Payton jersey on oh, over. Yeah. This is a Sean Springs jersey. Oh wow, that's yeah. a way back one. Yeah, I, I, like I can't. It. I can't claim either of them. I stole them from my brother. So uh, <laughs> credit to my brother. Um, but yeah, Danny, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. You are a Seattle guy. Yeah. So naturally, the first guy I want to talk to you about is Rashad Penny. Are you a Rashad Penny fan? Are you excited about him in Philadelphia? Do you think he even starts in Philadelphia? That, yeah, it's a good question. Yes, I am a big fan of Rashad Penny. Um, I will say when he was, the Seahawks picked him, I was not excited about that because it sort of just was going against everything I was like believing at that time. I mean, I still believe like the running backs don't matter to an extent thing. Um, I think I've softened to it a little bit that like having an elite guy who can rip off explosive runs is actually pretty helpful for your offense and not everybody can do that but at the end of the day like the running backs don't matter truthers running they ended up right because he was hurt so much right like and this Mm -hmm. is part of the whole analysis it's like you're these guys get hurt you can't necessarily rely on a guy to carry the load every year year in and year out for for so much and so i think going into the season with philly i think he has to survive the draft obviously in terms of like if they're going to draft somebody high then Obviously, his his role is going to be diminished. His contract seems to indicate that they don't like have a ton of faith in him to be the guy there. You know, he's like one one year, one point five million or something like that, like something really low, like ridiculously low to the point where I was like upset that the Seahawks wouldn't match that. Right. Um, so there's that. So like, I, I think it's too early to know really whether he's going to be like a big guy, uh, like a big factor there. I do think he has the talent, the explosiveness, the like the skill, the you know, all that, especially behind that offensive line to like he could rush for a thousand yards. It would not surprise me. Yeah. Um, but right now, right now, I think there's just too many caveats to, to be really confident about it. You know, I guess I'm sort of excited about the idea, but not confident that he's going to be like a huge factor there. And, you know, for four games, he'll probably look really great. And then, right. Yeah. <laughs> who it, it, knows? Ex- excited about the idea is kind of the the theme of the Rashad Penny experience throughout his career. Right. So uh, just exactly just. It's just a different jersey this time. Uh, but the guy who, who replaced <laughs> yeah. him in Seattle is Kenneth Walker. There was a lot of discourse last offseason about, like, could can he contribute in the passing game at all? Mm-hmm. Some people look back at his rookie season as evidence that he can uh, indeed catch a football. And some people look at it as evidence like he was super inefficient on a per-target basis. Mm-hmm. As, as a Seahawks fan, what was your impression of him in year one? Like, do you think he can be a three-down back? Yeah, I think he can be. I think he, I think he, like you said, he showed that he can catch a football, which I think was sort of like people sort of lose the thread a little bit. I think with like the pass catching thing, it's like, and you, and you do a good job of like, I think, you know, lending shades of gray to this because it's like, what kinds of routes are they running? How efficient are those routes? Like, are these the types of routes we want to see him run in terms of like fantasy value and all that stuff? Like, cause there is a huge amount of like difference between just catching a little dump off and catching a swing pass versus like, you know, a, a team that runs vertical routes for the, for the running backs and things like that. So I would say he proved to me that he can catch a football and that's like bare minimum. And I don't think he's like a zero in the passing game, but I think the Seahawks, the way that they want to play is not necessarily relying on a three down back. You know what I mean? Like they mm-hmm. want to rotate. They don't want to rely wholly on a guy to do everything. Even when he was like, when Walker was going off and like posting really big big games and like ripping off explosive runs and stuff, they were still taking him off the field, like for Travis Homer and things like this. And like Keith are down situations. Uh, You know, I think maybe that's how they want to play. I I don't, I don't know if, even if he can do it, like if they would ever do it like consistently where he's getting all three downs and like, you know, touching the ball 25, 30 times a game. Like, I don't really think they want to do that. And and he got hurt a little bit as a rookie. And I think they're probably going to try and, you know, avoid overworking him because he is such an explosive part of their offense. Like having him fresh is going to be a big factor. That being said, they did let Travis Homer go. 
and they don't really have it and they let Penny go and they don't really have anybody else. Like DJ Dallas is just a jag and I don't know necessarily if they're going to want to give him a bunch of touches when they could, when they have Kenneth Walker in the backfield. So depending on what happens in the draft, if they don't really take anyone in the draft, then I could see him getting a bigger workload in the passing game. But I think in their perfect world, he's not a heavy volume, you know, guy on three downs. Like he's probably just going to be like their early down guy and, and grinder and, and trying to get some explosive plays type of deal. Right. Yeah. I think your point about his injury from last season is pretty relevant. They just like the same regime just went through this for the last five years with Chris Carson and Rashad Penny, like being hurt on and off the entire time. Like they're probably sick of that and don't want to run these guys into the ground. Let's start. Um, That being said, just to, just to one last thing on that. Like I do think, so he got, so Walker had 35 targets in the passing game. And I want to say I added it up last night. There's like 40 something targets from all the other running backs combined. So like there is some meat on the bone there, I think for him to catch more passes and be a bigger part of the passing game. And maybe that they'll ramp him up a little bit. Um, but you know, in terms of like what you're asking is like, is he ever going to be like a high volume, like a Christian McCaffrey, you know, Saquon Barkley getting 80 targets in a season? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. He can graduate to where like Charbonnet is now is like a guy who can catch a swing pass and and be fine. Yeah. You guys do this bit on the ringer NFL draft show (laughs) called 50 shades of gray, where you, you kind of give a, a spectrum of, of comps or like player outcomes for a given prospect. So Bijan yeah. might be, you know, anywhere from, I don't know, Naj- Joe Mixon to Ladanian Tomlinson and with, you know, David Johnson in between, like whoever. Um, right, right. Your Fifty Shades of Grey for Devon A-Chain hit guys who ran for a thousand yards in the NFL starting at the 30 mark. So like 30 on up was kind of stud NFL running backs, at least short-lived ones. Right. You're, cl- you're clearly convinced of A-Chain's talent. If you were in some sort of pre-draft, rookie draft type scenario... Uh, you don't know draft capital. You don't know landing spot. Like how how confident are you before knowing those things that A chain will be like a an actual fantasy asset as right. a pro? I mean, I don't think I have like a. I would say just off the top of my head, and I've done literally like one rookie draft so far, so I don't like have a good feel for it yet. But like somewhere in the mid to late second round, I'd be totally fine taking him in a in a super flex league in a PPR league in particular. And and I think you mentioned like I, I so like my fifty shades. I'll just say it like the ten. So like at the bot starting from the bottom, like bottom to the top, like Chris Thompson would be like I think the low end of what you could expect. Like he's sort of a situational guy, can p- catch passes probably a lot. He, and Chris Thompson actually lasted in the league till he was thirty. I didn't realize this. And but he he was just basically a situational pass catching type player. I think that could be like sort of the low end of what we could see from A Chain. Going up to like 20 Matt Breida. Then we got 30 rookie year sleeve Steve Slayton. He went over a thousand yards, as you mentioned, but he only lasted like one year and then he was yeah. banged up. And you know, basically that was it. He I think he had like four hundred yards the second year, and then he never did anything else ever again. And then and then going up like 40, the higher end version would be like a job at best where he's being utilized in the passing game on the run game. And then the ultimate ceiling type thing I could see for A-Chain, considering his size and speed is like a work done type player. Work done went over a thousand yards, I think like five times and, and lasted in the NFL a really long time. And I'd love A-Chain. I think that's obviously like the pipe dream sort of mm-hmm. version of what we could what, what we could expect from him. But but yeah, like at the end of the day, I do think he has the capability if, if he lands in the right situation to be like a thousand yard running back. Like I, I know that kind of sounds like crazy, but... Like they used him at Texas A&M, like he was a between the tackles runner. Like I think he showed the ability to do that. He's obviously going to have to prove that he can stay durable in that type of type of role. But you know, if he lands in the right situation, I don't think it's like out of the realm of possibility. I think more likely he's probably going to be like a type of guy that's you know catching passes and, and you know maybe goes over a thousand scrimmage yards in a, in a season, and that's yeah. like sort of like the ideal. And, and you know, he's catching he's catching like five hundred yards passing and then like four or five hundred yards on the ground and and that's kind of like i think the most realistic version of it but yeah like the there is there are at least a few precedents for him like going in and having like pretty good production if he lands in the right system yeah yeah i think uh even even like he could be like a juiced up kenneth gainwell and get that kind of role and just be better at it because he's more talented i think than than kenny gainwell yeah on the ringer nfl draft show uh where you guys did the 50 shades of gray ben solak one of your co-hosts who also uh, does really, really good work. He mentioned on the show that you guys were talking about Kendra Miller, and he was talking about how he has, like, just a natural feel as a runner. Like, you can tell he knows how to play the position, but athletically, he's a little tight. Um, It just kind of generally lacks the traits to make his style work completely for him. 
I also think that that Miller's athleticism is important to his evaluation, but we just don't know how athletic he tests because he's hurt. Uh, do you have similar mm-hmm. concerns? Uh, do you think he's athletic enough? Like, what do you think about yeah, Ken so, Miller? I mean, I think it all, like everything that Ben was saying about him, I think tracks. I think he's got a little bit of tightness, but at the same time, he has really good feet where like he can negotiate tight areas and like anticipate where guys are going to go low and kind of like move his feet to like avoid those types of tackles, jump over guys, hurdle. It's not like you're literally hurdling a player, but you know what I'm saying? Where they hurdle a tackle attempt, essentially. When yeah, they're like, yeah. Like, you got a guy going low and you sort of like, you know, anticipate kick your, that. Yeah, hurdle kick over. your legs out. Yeah, exactly. Like you try to avoid those low tackles. He's got a really good feel for that. And in, in the way that almost reminds me a little bit of like a Ramondre Stevenson type player. And I don't remember off the top of my head, like how Stevenson tested, but I don't think he was like especially explosive, but then he get him on the field and he's like turning the corner and like ripping a, like a 95 yard, like, yeah. run. like that, that's the type of, I, I, I see Kendra Miller as sort of like a poor man's version of that. And I think I could see him in the same vein as that, but it, it just, he, he was one of the harder, I think running backs to evaluate for me because he was a little, just like un- inconsistent. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there were games where I was like, okay, this guy, is like Ramondre Stevenson reborn and like has almost like the same body style has like a very similar, like, you know, kind of like patience and ability to like, like I was saying, like make guys miss with his like really quick feet and things like that. But then there was other games where you just sort of like run forward and fall down 10 times. And I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't know exactly what he is. Like, it's just, it was hard for me to figure him out. Um, at the end of the day, I think I came out liking him. Like I do like him. I think He's the type of guy I would be picking in dynasty drafts, but I don't think I would be doing it like at the early part of the second round before the draft, before we figure out really what we're doing. Like end of this, like second half of the second and definitely in the third, I'd be willing to take him. But like, to me, he's a little bit of a risk because he could be a day three guy. It wouldn't shock me even a little bit if he ends up on in like round four or something like that. So he's, he's a tough one. I think he's a really tough guy to figure out where do, do you have like an official take on him? Like, do you like him? Do you dislike him? I think, yeah, I, I go back and forth. I I agree that he's risky pre-draft. Like, in order for him to get good draft capital, like, an NFL team has to just, like, be so in on their tape evaluation of him because they've really gotten no official yeah. numbers, um, which seems like a tall ask. I also came away from his film really liking him, and I think it's almost impossible not to just because he's so much fun to watch. He, yeah. he breaks so many tackles and has, like, these nice dead legs, and he's got, a, like, a spin move that he spams. But, yeah, like, my... my great or like based on what i had charted at the end of it i was like oh sh-, like he he was kind of bad i guess uh as far as like nav- <laughs> navigating really? the line of scrimmage and stuff uh based on my like play level yeah. impressions but yeah i i liked him he's like the kind of running back that you want like marion barber or damian pierce like you those guys are fun to watch yeah Let- I, I found him to be like a conundrum i i, I don't really know what to do with him i think We'll we'll know more and have like a stronger feel for it when he gets drafted and see where he gets drafted and all that. Like I know that's a cop out, but like I j- I really just didn't know what to make of him because I I could see him ending up as like a volume runner in the NFL, and I can also see him going in like the sixth round and like we never hear about him again, kind of deal. Yeah, he he does kind of he does kind of <laughs> feel like a Seahawks runner to me. Like he could uh, oh for sure like they, they would yeah. love him there. But but I'm gonna go back yeah. to your your Fifty Shades of Gray concept and run yeah. two guys by you who you were not able to cover on on the Ringer NFL Draft Show. What would be yeah. your Fifty Shades of Grey for Zach Evans? I had a lot of fun doing Evans. He Evans is such a fun runner. Like, I think every time I go back and watch him, I, I like him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that he measured in at 202 pounds at the combine kind of spooked me, I think. And so I kind of just, like, set him aside for a while and stopped thinking about him. And then when I was prepping for this for this Fifty Shades thing, I was like, oh, man, he's, like, really fun to watch. Like, he, he can he really is. rip off, like, an explosive play. And and so my 50 shades starts on the lower end and starts with like a lighter guy. So like, here's, here's my 10, like a Darrington Evans type of guy, like pretty explosive. He's on the lighter side. This is like assuming that, that Zach Evans actually plays at like two two or whatever yeah, he yeah. measured in at, which I don't think it's necessarily the case, but like explosive, you know, put up numbers in college, but just ends up turning into like a number three back in the NFL. And you don't really hear about him all that much. Like he might play a couple of times because of injuries, but never earns like a starting role. No, my 20 would be like a, daryl henderson type player where he's like a slasher yeah big play guy like one of the most fun players to watch at memphis like he was just ripping off runs he was creating on his own and then gets into the nfl and just it never comes together for him type type of deal and Uh you know he's out of the league before you before you blink kind of deal like i can't believe daryl henderson didn't work out like to me like i loved you know what i mean um yeah yeah the third the 30 comp like right down the middle 
is like a Ronald Jones type of player who I still think is a good runner, but like he just never was able to put anything together. He was a zero in the passing game, but he'll end up being like he's a backup in Dallas. Now he could get carries this year. You know, like he's still mm-hmm. in the league. He's still pretty young. And and basically he's he's turned into like he's had a quote unquote like fine career. He's not like a star or anything like that, but he's still in the league. Teams still trust him and he's a good runner. He's like a, a elusive. Stylistically, they kind of reminded me each other, of each other, like the way that they run. And so that one I thought was pretty good. And then the 40, the 40 comp, I didn't really feel great about this one, but like I saw this comp and I'm like, it kind of makes sense. Like a Melvin Gordon type player. Mm-hmm. I think where... that was his, I think that was his comp coming out of high school. Like for whatever recruiting service. Yeah, and I and I went back and I watched some Melvin Gordon um, from college, and I was like, yeah, I can see this. Like he's on the bigger side, like explosive runner, like kind of glides when he runs. So I think like stylistically, the way that they run is similar. And then like going into the league, like if I, I look back, has Melvin Gordon even run for a thousand yards one time? Like I think he's maybe if he does, he, he's he was like, like right there. I remember a couple times. I yeah. think I don't. I, I want to say he has zero thousand yard rushing seasons, but he's like consistently pretty like. Oh, he had he, he had he was, one okay he had one he had one and he um, missed it by three yards one time 14 yards oh, 80 yards that's like, a bummer yeah he okay was so, so close. regardless like he's he's had a good career like he's been very productive you know i don't think anyone ever considered him like an elite elite back but he was like always really good and then like my 50 comp like the the absolute ceiling i think that evans could come in if he actually and th- and there's probably some some similarities like in terms of you know background and, and like usage in college is like an alvin camara type player and this is sort of like assuming that he is better at catching passes than he showed in college because he was sort of you know spotty not really utilizing the passing game all that much but like i i saw him catch a couple passes i was watching his tcu tape and they're like throwing swings to him and he had like no problem he was just like he didn't feel like he was fighting the fighting the football at all like it was like he he felt like a natural pass catcher to me so i don't know if he's necessarily going to be running the same routes as camara but you know a really elusive explosive runner guy that breaks tackles has a very smooth style to him like sort of an effortless type gait i see all that stuff with with evans and of course when camara came in like you know he was not expected to be like an elite producer coming into the nfl Mm -hmm. because he like platooned in college and and all that stuff so um, i think there's some parallels there so that's that's my that's my low end to high end comps I like it. I especially like, I mean, I love Evans, but uh, the the Camara one makes a yeah. lot of sense to me. Like, I think Evans, yeah, if he's not fighting the football, I think he can contribute in the passing game. But he's got a similar sort of, like, just weirdness to him uh, in the same way that Camara, where, like, Camara will get drilled and just kind of, like, flop off of it, where yep. Evans will, like just unload on a DB like head on and then flop off of them. Like he, it's, it's, it's like the same thing, but backwards. Um, yeah. How about 50 shades of gray for tank Bigsby? Yeah. Tank tank was another interesting one. So I'll just go, I'll run through these a little faster this time since I'm not as high on tank. I like tank, but like, I'm not quite as high on it him as, as I am on Evan. So like my 10 would be something like a Trey sermon where you get a little hype, you come in third rounder, but then, nothing ever happens after that kind of deal. My 20 is like a Zamir White type player. And I just saw him being like similar stylistically, like kind of an upright runner, some explosiveness, maybe like ends up being like a number two somewhere in the NFL. My 30 is like a carry on Johnson type player. My 40 version would be like Jeff Wilson Jr., who actually I was watching some some highlights of Jeff Wilson. I was like, oh, actually, I can really see this. Like the way that they run is pretty similar, like hard, but like upright. They're just kind of like bouncing off people as they go through like the whole like not necessarily like super elusive, but like has, has that burst and like they run really hard that coaches end up really liking them kind of deal. Yeah. And then my 50 comp, like sort of the higher end is some, someone like Miles Sanders. I, I just thought like their running style was kind of similar. They're both kind of upright, both kind of like, you know, plant their foot, get downfield. Um, has some explosiveness, but something not quite there to make them elite, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I like the carry-on comp. I like the Miles Sanders comp. Cam Akers is another... I don't know if that's a high-end comp or not, because who knows what Cam Akers is, right. but he kind of... Right. Yeah, kind of feels the same as Bigsby does now, where, like, who knows if he's good or not. There's a lot of guys yeah. in this class like that. It's, it's a deep class, uh, not a lot of consensus beyond really just Bijan and Gibbs, no. and, and uh, everybody Seriously. kind of likes Charbonnet. But depending on where you look, there are all sorts of players that land in people's top fives, top sixes, uh, near the top of the class. I'm going to name a few running backs and you tell me, it can just be a one word, yes or no, or you can expand if you want. And you tell me whether caping up for this player as a borderline top five rookie running back makes you a hipster or does not make you a hipster. <laughs> so to be clear, if, if it makes you a hipster, does that mean I disagree or I agree? I think if it, <laughs> okay, or is yeah, it just, that, that's I'm good. I'm trying good. to figure out. Yeah. Right, right, right. I think if it makes you a hipster, 
then it's like it's not a reasonable position to to hold like in earnest. You're you're doing it okay. performatively or or okay, yeah, you know yes. something like that. Roshan Johnson. No, not a hipster. I like him. I think he's he's just he's sort of a low ceiling high floor grinder I, I comped him to like a chris carson like at the ceiling like if he could like if everything pans out perfectly for him he's like a chris johnson oh sorry chris uh chris carson type player chris chris johnson if he could if he could just add some speed <laughs> man yeah, could... that would be a, like a ridiculous comp. Yes, chris carson <laughs> okay chris carson. uh tajay spears no you're not a hipster but i'm not a, i'm not quite as like bullish on him as, as everyone else i i do see it like he's got a lot of talent he's very explosive elusive like there's so much it's so much fun to watch him but like it's similar as like the a chain thing like he's like 199 200 pounds and so that's like a big concern for me going forward plus he has two acl tears in in one knee so there's i think some some medicals there that kind of like would also preclude teams from using him in heavy like like u- utilizing him with like heavy volume yeah yeah he seems like i mean i don't know that he goes undrafted but he seems like a guy you don't want to invest in a lot before you he's like in your building and you can you can actually see what he is sean tucker that's that's hipstery to me. Okay. I don't see okay. him as like a top five guy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> Deuce Vaughn. Huge hipster. If you if you have him in your fi- in your top five, like that's just to create content. I love Deuce Vaughn. We've comped him to a Shetland pony. Like if Secretariat was a Shetland pony, uh, that was originally a Scott Barrett take, but I, I fucking love it. It's like he's just so tiny. Like he, <laughs> yeah. like I just don't know how that will actually work. Like 170 pounds or whatever he is, like. He's just going to get thrown around. That being said, I love watching him. I think he's he's a fun player. This, this might not land at all. I don't even, I don't know the reach of this particular meme, but there's like this stupid video of uh, like a dog agility setup, but it's it's like a tiny little Shrek running around on everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's like oh, what Deuce yeah. Vaughn is, but uh, Muhammad Ibrahim. Uh, that's that's a hipster take. Okay, okay. He's he's like a slightly bigger version of Deuce Vaughn, I feel like. Like <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to like here, but he's also like just I don't know. I always I forget that he's that. small cuz he was listed at like I I don't remember what it was, but like 5'10", 210 and he's like 5'7", 203. Like he's Devin Singletary. He's uh, tiny. Yeah. That's yeah. a great that's a great comp for him actually. Yeah. What about Eric Gray? Uh I actually like Eric Gray, so no, this isn't hipstery. Um Okay. I'd be curious to see what your what your research has said on him, but like I actually really liked him. Like he 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 definitely like spams the dead leg move where he's like, you know, like faking one way and then cutting the other way. Uh-huh. But like it's actually very effective. Like it works <laughs> for him. Like keep doing it if it fucking works. That's right, my right. whole thing. And so I don't know. He, to me, was like a guy who flashed. I, I don't have any illusions that he's going to be like a early round pick. He's probably going to end up in the fourth or fifth round. But he is, I think he's a pretty good runner. He's pretty elusive. He's got a little bit of explosiveness to him. Not necessarily long speed, but like in the short area, he can make guys miss. So I actually really like him. Yeah, he's like he's like when you play Super Smash Bros. and you only know like one of the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> but it's effective. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Let's do a couple more. Uh, Kenny McIntosh. It depends. I, I guess the context is like, if he's in your top five, it's purely because you're in a PPR league and you think he's going to be like Tevin Coleman and catch like 50 passes or whatever, 60 passes a year. I think he's he's interesting. He's I liked him way more than I think the consensus before the combine. And then he like did not test very well. Like mm-hmm. he didn't run very well. So like that kind of like throws a little bit of cold water on it. But at the same time, I, I think his 10 yard split was pretty solid. Like, He's got a little juice to him as a runner, but like more importantly, he's a really good pass catcher. So he's the type of guy like I'm taking in the fourth round of rookie drafts, like and feeling pretty good about it. See where, see what like where he lands and all that, and if he can get a roll. But you know, top five, I'm not putting him in the top five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he played in the SEC on the best team in the country. Like I think he's athletic enough to play. Uh, okay, right. let's actually finish off with this one. Is he a Banacanda? I think there's a little bit of hipsterness to this one. I feel like I, I do think I get it because he's big, he's very fast, he's very explosive, and he's young. So like, there's a lot of things that just be, before even turning on the tape, if you see those things, you're like, this guy in this class, I could put him in my top five. And I kind of understand that. To me, when I watch the tape, I'm not nearly as excited about him. I think he's got a lot of explosiveness, like he can rip off big runs, but everything else, he's very, very boomer bust, it feels like to me. Like he just doesn't really create for his, for himself. He doesn't break a ton of tackles. He kind of like, his running style was kind of leggy to me. Mm-hmm. Like he's a little bit like high cut, leggy and not super, super quick in the short area. So like my first pass on watching him, I was like, eh, he's fine. Yeah. However, I'm biased. 
he's not my type. Like I have a type of running back that I like typically like guys that create on their own guys that are breaking tackles, guys that can, you know, if they get hit in the backfield, create something out of that kind of deal. And he is not that type of player. That being said, I think he has a place in the NFL and he may end up being at the end of like, in terms of production, like it would not actually surprise me that much if he was the top five running back in this class in terms of ultimate production, because in, and I sort of changed my view on this a little bit watching, you know, like Isaiah Pacheco last year, I think he's a similar style player as Pacheco, who I'm still a little bit dubious that he's actually any good, but he's just so fast and he runs so hard that he has a place and coaches, it, it endears him to coaches and they let him play you know what yeah. i mean so like even though i don't maybe maybe i just don't think he's that good but like it doesn't matter what i think because he's on the field and he's getting production so i could see him ending up being higher in terms of actual production just because of those reasons plus he has the upside of being young whereas some of these other guys are like 23 24 years old he's still only like 20 and so he could get better and he's you know still an ascending player versus some of these guys are kind of like this is who he, who they are so yeah i'm open to i'm open to izzy abba abba uh, sorry, Abba, <laughs> sorry. You're gonna have to do it for me. I'm, I believe I believe it's a banana. Yeah, yeah, banana I, I like put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable every single time, and mm-hmm. it like fucks me up. But anyways, yes, I think I'm I'm allowing for him to like be better than I think he is because I like I'm aware that I have a I have a type and I have a bias. There. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, that does make sense. You heard it here, Danny Kelly from the Ringer. <laughs> <laughs> he he gets it, but he thinks you're a hipster if you have Izzy Abanacanda <laughs> as a top five running back. Danny, thanks for yeah. joining me on the show. I appreciate it. Uh, follow Danny at Danny B Kelly on Twitter. He he doesn't quite have the cachet to just have the Danny Kelly, uh, but he's he's <laughs> second. Too many of us. Yeah, he's second. Too the, many of he's us. Second the pecking order. He's got the middle name. But yeah, go check out the Ringer uh, NFL Draft Guide. It's it's worth it for the comps and the user interface alone. But yeah, hit like, hit subscribe. See you on Wednesday. Peace. Get wild.